Good evening, my friends. How are you all doing on this Sunday night, late afternoon or early evening here? April 30th, Valpurgis Nacht. Some of you know this day as uh, the other Halloween. Um, it's actually uh, still celebrated here in Europe, uh, certain countries, uh, Northern Europe, uh, Germany, uh, Czech Republic, uh, Sweden, Finland, those kind of countries. Um, and they usually have bonfires and things like that. It's actually a Christian tradition for the next day. The 1st of May is uh, actually Saint Valpurga feast day. Um, so um, a few notes that I made, very interesting, it goes back to uh, uh, the 1st of May, 870, all those years ago, the 8th, 8th century, uh, Abyssin Francia, um, Abyssin is a, a kind of female abbot. So um, she was canonized um, the 1st of May, 870. Uh, she died actually uh, in 777, uh, 20th February. And um, she was actually the saint of uh, against disease and witchcraft. So that's the explanation. And people prayed to that saint when they were ill or uh, they thought someone was making a bad spell on them, something like that. And this has been documented uh, a lot in the 1600s um, about Walpurgis Night and uh, Sunk Walpurgis Nacht uh, in German. Um, so the eve, April 30th, is the uh, the opposite, you know, the witches go out and celebrate because the next day, the next day is the Christianity uh, day, so reserved. So they have to do their thing um, uh, the day before, and that's usually a, quite often a, a, a Sunday, is it? This year. So the celebrations in Europe are usually uh, burning witches' effigies, at least I hope they're only effigies. And uh, uh, certain parts of England, for example, Lincolnshire, has a bit of this tradition still going. And even the USA, there's uh, some, uh, unfortunately, cults, uh, worship this particular day but it's nothing different to Halloween you know all Hallows Eve the day before Christian worship day uh, is the opposite you know and it's mentioned in uh, uh, Goethe's Faust Dr. Faustus and uh, even in one version of uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. And talking about Dracula, I found a very interesting pipe, which um, we all know the uh, Peterson Dracula pipe. And I thought for, on this occasion, I will 
bring the other Dracula pipe, this one. It's a fascinating pipe. I got it from uh, uh, pipes and pens and more, P, P and N, uh, a link below. I got a number of uh, estate pipes from him and it says nine millimeter. It's called a Tyburn pipe. And um, for sure it was made in England, probably the late nineties, but there's almost no information about Tyburn pipes. And I've looked everywhere to try and find more about this but the decoration of course the staining is very similar to the Dracula pipe uh, which is focused on the stem and here it's focused also on the bowl it's a briar pipe and I've smoked it a couple of times in the last weeks and it's actually a good smoker uh, well drilled and um, as nine millimeters is perfect for me. And the lighter today is, uh, of course, a pentagram Zippo. And the tamper today is befitting this day, the devil's head. I got this from an antique shop in England a classic English uh, antique shop where an old man with spectacles had a, a junk shop and I found it's a corner and he said, you really want to buy that? Uh, I said, why not? Uh, it's not cursed, is it? And he looked at me like, you may think so, but I couldn't possibly comment. So I bought it, you know, for five quid. And so far it's been a good friend. You know. Nothing nasty going on. <laughs> I guess that the devil was always good with heat, you know. And the tobacco today befitting this particular day is uh, Drucker and Sons, The Devil's Own. But don't worry, it's a very good English blend. Um, slightly different from the tra Trafalgar. Um, it's uh, Black Cavendish, uh, Burley, Latakia and Virginia. 2.9 in tobacco reviews, medium strength, which I can handle, but um, a bit stronger than Trafalgar in Nick. But it's just, you know, as we have Nick as Tampa, you have Nick in your pipe. You know? I've only smoked it a couple of times, so it's just an impression. Um, but I think it's slightly burly forward. A um, bit of sweetness and nuttiness is more dominant. And slightly behind that, the Golden Virginia is um, a bit of citrus and a bit of tang. It's, Number two, slightly. Number three, uh, I think, is the Black Cavendish. It's smoothing, very nice. And I like a bit of Black Cavendish in English blends because it smooths it and milds it a, a little bit. And the Latakia is relatively weak in the background, uh, but adds to a bit of sweetness and a little kiss of smokiness as well. As you know, I like to involve a bit of art 
in my videos. And uh, there's one particular painter, um, classic painter, uh, Luis Ricardo Falera. Um, he lived uh, 1851 to 1896. Um, he made beautiful paintings of uh, this kind of uh, witchery night, you know. Um, now, some of you uh, don't like nudity, so don't look at the rest of this video or the next uh, one minute. Uh, or just squint your eyes or, you know, watch through the gaps of your fingers. Um, he made this fantastic painting of, uh, it's actually called, uh, it's called the uh, Witches of the Sabbath and was painting 1878. Here it is. what you're all thinking and what you're pondering on about that painting. Uh, was it watercolour or was it oil on canvas? It was the latter. <laughs> he made one or two um, other paintings uh, in the same genre. Uh, Faust's Dream, this one. Another one about a witch, scantily clad, uh, unnamed painting, this one. It's an interesting guy, he actually lived in England as well and some of his paintings were made in, made in England. He was uh, of course from Spain and uh, some links below one or two other uh, YouTubes have looked at his art and um, uh, regarding uh, partly as a, a master with skin tones and uh, interesting he was a, an amateur astronomer and he obviously loved the heavenly bodies. Preparing for this night, as it's going to be a full moon, of course I had thought about this in advance, which explains my attire and uh, explains this this broomstick yeah a broomstick and uh, you have to name of course uh, a broomstick like uh, Nimbus 2000 from Harry Potter and I decided to call this one Tally Ho <laughs> I invested uh, eight francs in this lovely uh, witchery broomstick. It'll be useful in autumn when I uh, sweep the leaves. And I'll take a, I'll take a ride this evening when it's a bit darker and the neighbors are hopefully not watching me. Interesting thing about this blend is when it goes to sleep, you just puff a bit and it goes back to smoking, you know. It doesn't go out very easily. Do I like it better than Trafalgar? 
I don't know. It's equally, equally good, I think. Uh, this black Cavendish has a nice influence on this blend, but um, I like Schofalga very much as an English blend. If anyone has information about Tyburn uh, pipes, there's actually a, a second line. There's actually a, a second line on this pipe, which says uh, the Young Line series. You see it here better. There's a kind of a logo with a, a scripted T on the stem. And uh, pipefill.eu has an example of this pipe, but no text, no information, who made it. I think it's one of the London uh, pipe makers, because Tyburn is, of course, a famous place where the uh, the hangings of London uh, took place and the Tyburn River was uh, which is covered up to, in modern London but uh, so I think it was made in London uh, there's no other indication on the pipe where it was made um, it's almost like something that Ben Wade three or four years ago would make a theme pipe like this, but uh, this goes maybe a decade earlier or two. So if anyone knows who made this and what happened to Tyburn pipes, and uh, let me know. But I think it's very Dracula-lesque, isn't it? Wouldn't you say? Anyway, if you like Halloween and you would like another day in the year where you could do something similar, Valpurgis night is uh, an alternative. I'll see you a bit later for my takeoff. So it's tally-ho, my friends, and if I catch those naughty witches, I'm giving them all a jolly good spanking. <laughs>